up, gang? <clears throat> What's that? So every time after the fights, I pulled out that piece of paper Joe Silva puts down the fights of the night. So I go back in my room and everybody was asking in my room. And I called off and said, fight of the night was Junior Dos Santos versus, uh, you know, Mark Hunt. Knockout of the night was Junior Dos Santos and submission night. And Tyson's like, what? No way. That, that doesn't get one of my love. So Miela Rose was like, all right. What are we going to say no to Mike? Uh-huh. I wasn't going to argue with him. Mike was a pretty good presence this weekend. Uh, the weigh-ins and here tonight. Yeah. Yeah, he had fun, man. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, he... he He's the Justin Bieber for grown men that like fighting, man. You know what I mean? It's like he makes everybody go crazy. And, uh, you know, he's fun to watch fights with. He's fun to hang around with. And, did, yeah, I like having him around. Did you pretty much, did the, the main event go the way you, you figured it would go, though? Um, yeah, I, I say I don't like to predict fights, and I don't ever predict fights. But I kept saying I think Kane's the best heavyweight in the world. And I still do. I think Kane's the best, the best in the world. I think the guy's so well-rounded. Um, but Junior Dos Santos put on, a, put on a great show tonight. What did you think about Bigfoot claiming that he was hit illegally to the back of the head or to the back of the neck? When you turtle and put your hands over your ears and crouch down like that and don't intelligently defend yourself after you just got knocked silly, that fight's getting stopped. You know what I mean? They know that. They know that going into the fight. And... Um, you know, I, only he knows how hurt he really was, but to the rest of the world, I don't know. You know, that's one of those things you guys could say, any of us could say, yeah, he probably could have taken a few more shots or, you know, it's, it's one of those fights. It's not like, this is an outrage. That fight should have never been stopped. I don't, I don't think anybody's saying that. When TJ mentioned getting married in October, you said to him it'll, it'll be before that. Yeah. Get, do you have one of the Fox Sports? No, I don't know. I mean, he's uh, obviously that fight. There, there's there's four fights we're looking at right now for that show. So that, that could that's be one. one of them. You, you, huh? Three others. <laughs> Would Cormier maybe be one of the names? Huh? Cormier maybe be one, one of the names? There's some possibilities. I had heard also today from, uh, I saw in an article, and I know you can't read, believe everything you read on the internet, but GSP was alluding to the fact that he might fight at UFC 165. Have you heard from him since uh, the last scrum? Uh, that's in Toronto on September 21st. Toronto, September 21st? Not true. I talked to G- I, we You did speak to him. I so. called me and Lorenzo yesterday, and then he and I talked tonight right before I walked into the fights. Can you give us any prelude to when we might expect? We had a good conversation. You know, he 100% absolutely positively knows that Weidman is going to beat Anderson Silva. He doesn't even, no doubt in his mind. But what if? That that fight won't happen. That the fight with him won't happen because Weidman's going to win. So what the fight if? is Hendrix right now? <laughs> yeah, there's no what if for him. He absolutely positively knows he's going to win that fight. So, so the fight is Hendrix right now? And, mm-hmm. and if Anderson wins? He wants to fight John Hendricks. They've been going back and forth on Twitter just fighting? They're both in Russia? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. They have both said they want to fight each other. Yes. Anything is possible. The problem, the problem is nobody's clamoring, saying, "Oh, I got to see Machida fight him." And Jones finished him so easily. That's the problem with that fight, you know. And 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 Machida didn't make a statement in his last fight, like. J did tonight. You know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. As far as them both being in Russia, I mean, are they on any UFC related no, trip? No, no, this was all? no. No, no, no. They did some seminar out there. Were you aware that John was in the ring with Bob Sapp and uh, Alexander Emelianenko? That he was in the ring with mm-hmm. them? Yeah. No, it doesn't surprise me though. Uh, I mean, he's been in many UFC events, but that was the first time at the Wayans, first time he got into the Octagon. What do you tell you about his experience tonight? Tyson? Oh, he loves coming. You know, he loves being around fights, watching fights, you know, and guys, 
unfortunately you can't experience it, but everybody should experience what it's like to stand there during the stare-offs. You know, it's it's just it's one of the greatest things in sports, man. It's uh, I love it. It's the weigh-ins to me are, are are just as important as tonight. You know, it's it's where you see your guy. What kind of shape is he in? Did the guys make weight? What happens in the stare-down? That guy looks scary to look right. Uh, that's when all the stuff starts really getting going. It kickstarted for the fight. Um, and, and, and <laughs> you know, he, he was there. He, he, he loved it, man. He was like right in the middle of everything. He loved it. He, se- he seemed to enjoy it more when the push happened between yeah, Habib and yeah, Trujillo. Sure that's he was giddy said. like a schoolgirl. He was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good to see. Yeah, he did. He liked it. Did you have any thoughts on that? I mean, Irving Madoff looked great tonight, but, I mean, he had that shove yesterday after he misses weight. Uh, I mean, it seems like kind of disrespectful to shove a guy after you, you don't even make weight. I mean, did you have any thoughts on that? We, I, ta- I was talking about it with, with, uh, with, with a bunch of people, you know, the commission and all kinds of other people. The nicest guys in the world are the meanest, nastiest dudes you've ever seen on Wayne Day. Wayne Day, that's why I'm always right. When he pushed him, I said, Jesus Christ, I'm getting old. I can't even stop a push now. And I was like this, we're ready to go. But that, that, that's why we're there. That's what happens. We're there to make sure the fight doesn't happen before the fight. These guys are nasty. This shit's going to happen. As long as nobody punches each other and no melee breaks out up there. Listen, that's part of the game. It's all part of the deal. You know, I, I actually think, you know, Bert and Keith kind of overreacted a little bit. You know what I mean? They, they went crazy. Like, come on. Push this thing. He pushed the guy. They're going to be punching each other in the face and slamming each other on their heads tomorrow night. We can handle a little pushing around here. These guys are miserable. They're nasty. He didn't make weight. You know he's upset about that. He's losing his purse to this guy already. These are all the things you got to think of. I don't even... I literally, when I walk in, we come in from the... Uh, out back, I walk in, I don't even talk to these guys. I don't say hi to them. I don't do anything. When I see them up there, you'll see some of them will shake your hand, some of them won't. I leave these guys alone on that day. This is the nastiest day of the entire promotion for the fight. I don't I don't mess with them. What did you think of uh, Khabib's fight? About who? About uh, Nurmagan... Nurm- no, Khabib! I mean, <laughs> he, I mean he, it, was a, it was a ugly wrestling clinic. It was a wrestling clinic? Yep. Huh? No, they didn't find him for the push. You're not going to get fined for a push or something like that. I mean, you would have to, you'd have to lay your hands on somebody to get fined. You know what I mean? Throwing punches before the fights, things like that. I've explained this before, but the reason that I stand there so that this doesn't happen is actually a state law in Nevada that somebody has to be there in between them to stop that stuff. There was a whole streak in boxing where guys were squaring off and guys were punching each other in the face. Like it happened, there was a streak of it going on. That's when it gets bad. That can't happen, huh? 20 now, which is obviously an amazing record. You just called it an ugly wrestling like he the fight yeah, but that's what happens is now he'll get into, he said he's 20 and 0 and you just said he put on an ugly wrestling clinic does, does he deserve to fight? Yes he does and it's the same thing that used to happen with John Fitch you know people want to talk about the wrestling get your wrestling better this is mixed. you should be able to stop his wrestling you should be able to strike with him you should be able to do this if he takes you down you should be able to get back up he needs to fight higher caliber guys so with Forrest you know we know everybody loves him Who's that? Forrest. Forrest? Yeah. In the Hall of Fame? Yeah. For what he, you know, for what he means, maybe more so than the record? Or I'm inducting him and Stefan Bonner into the Hall of Fame this, this year. year. Yeah. In July? Together, yeah. You know what? Fighters. Yeah, at the expo. Does that mean Bonner's done too? Huh? <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Okay. Sorry. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. What did he say? No. Dana, are you after a fight? The fighters let you know they're they're relieved and everything. After these uh, events like this, is it a big relief for you? Because when everything goes smooth, I mean, oh, yeah. what do you do? Tonight's after? a good night. You know, uh, what I sweat and what I stress every single event is having a, a horrible night. I mean, that's that's how that's what I worry about. That's that's the shit that gives me nightmares. So when an event goes this way and, and it's so good. It, and, and so many other key fights can be made after it, and the fans go leave, you know, getting what they paid for. The greatest night in the world for me. 
How would you put this one in, in context with some others? It, it was pretty solid. solid I can tell event. you we've had a pretty solid career since we bought the UFC. I can count on one hand how many shows have absolutely sucked. So another one down. It's, and, you know, we go out and we... We do all the things that we do, the bells and whistles, and these guys come in and they deliver. They really do. And there'll be nights like tonight, the prelims weren't the biggest home run you've ever seen, but the main card was awesome. You know, the, the pay-per-view was great. And there's some nights that the pay-per-view will be decent, but the prelims killed it for us on free TV. So my, that's why my philosophy is if you put on enough great fights, when, when, when you sit down, you're looking for a few of those holy shit moments where you jump up, you yell, holy shit, and you high-five the guy next to you. You know, if you get a, a, a few of those a night and, and, and everybody walks away happy. If you don't get any of those, people are pissed. So how did Mike Tyson convince you to uh, change over the bonus from going to... Uh... He said he didn't win. He did. <laughs> I said, he got it. That's it. Scratch out, Junior. I'm going to argue with Mike. No. Yeah. On Thursday, you said that you had a feeling that Houston is, is going to be earlier than Mexico for King Molesky's uh, yeah, you, you told me that uh, you had a feeling that Houston is going to be before yeah. Mexico. Is it still the same? You have a negotiation going there? Is it going to be September, October? No. Um, you know, we were... Uh, we're on Televisa. We're on Televisa now. Exactly. That's regularly it. or just tonight? <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> That might change. Mexico might Mexico change. Mexico in October. Huh? Mexico in October. <laughs> I like it. I like where your head's at. Sounds good to me. Huh? I have not yet. He doesn't know. I'm over. I will talk to Stefan now. We're talking. Together. Yeah, those two are going to be together for the rest of their lives, whether <laughs> so they like it or not. Because, because this last week was a fucking nightmare for me. I've been dealing with bullshit all week. Stuff that went down, stuff that happened, stuff that you guys don't know about and won't know about. And uh, it literally ate up every minute of my time. I was in the office till 10, 11 every night, pissed off, angry, and I forgot to call Forrest Griffin. And I said, Forrest, I wanted this to be a surprise. So surprise, your, your retirement thing is tonight. Me and Lorenzo are getting together this week. I'm going to call Forrest in and we're going uh, to lay out a deal for him and bring him into the company. Who? I don't know. I haven't thought about that yet. They won't say yes. You know? I want BJ Penn to retire. Rich, Rich hasn't taken the punish, taken the punishment that some of these other guys have taken. You know, his last fight didn't turn out too well for him, but he's not some guy who was consistently getting knocked out. He's not a guy who's consistently getting injured. Forrest Griffin's made a lot of money. He made a lot of money. He's got a beautiful family. He, you know, there's just, you know, I know this isn't how promoters are supposed to talk, but I care about these guys, and I don't want to see any of these guys get hurt. It's just not, it's not worth it. What more could Forrest Griffin accomplish than he already has? He's already done things that people said he couldn't do and that he wouldn't do. Why? DJ Penn, too. Dude, you've won belts in, you know, two different weight classes. You're one of the greatest ever. You became a huge superstar. You have money. You, you know, have a beautiful family. But it's hard, man. It's hard to walk out of that, you know, that arena's packed. Everybody's screaming your name. You're making tons of money. It's hard to walk away from that. Really hard to walk away from that. BJ is too tough for his own good. BJ might not be knocked out, but the shots that BJ took would have knocked out a normal human being. He's had his head bounced off the canvas like a basketball by Matt Hughes, by George St. Pierre, and then Rory just did it to him. BJ Penn has left that octagon looking like a fucking alien. 
he's too tough for his own good. You don't knock out BJ Penn. BJ Penn absorbs every amount of punishment you give him. Doesn't mean he hasn't taken damage. He's taken a lot of damage, and I don't want to see him take any more. On, on Boris, is there any is there any one thing or just an accumulation of things why you know you figured this all came down right now? What's that? With Forrest, I mean, as far as like yeah, well, he, I was fucking all over him to retire. I wanted him to retire. But I mean, like I said, there's nothing left to do. You're still gonna make money. You're gonna be with us. You're not going anywhere. I'm not saying hey, retire and kick you to the curb. What, I said, what's next? What's left? You just had a, your wife is beautiful. You just had a beautiful baby. What, 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 why? You know, there's no, there's no answer to why. He couldn't answer why, except I don't want to do it. I still want to fight. So he's still going down to the gym, getting his head punched in, down sparring, right? With all these younger, faster guys that he's training with, gets to the fight and gets injured. Twice he did that. Or did he say three times? I don't even remember. I think it was twice. twice. Yeah. So twice he went through the entire camp and got hurt. For what? For nothing. And then he called me up and he said, you're right, I'm wrong. You're big, I'm small. You're smart, I'm dumb. You know? <laughs> he said, I, I'm, I'm in, I quit. When was it? He said, off. When was it that he finally... Like two months ago. Whenever he got injured, how long ago was that? Two months ago, three months ago? So why wait? I have no concept of time anymore. So why wait so long to... I was going to do it at the last press conference or the one... I don't remember. I'm a mess. I've been dealing with my ear shit for a year. You know what I mean? I've been... Well, it's fitting that it happened in Vegas. What's that? It's fitting that it happened in Vegas. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. It was good. It was easy for me to call him last minute and say, hey, let's do it tonight. <laughs> do you consider BJ retired in the sense that you guys don't offer him fights? I do. And, and it's, it's, it's not that we don't offer BJ fights. These guys know. When you're in a situation like BJ or, or some of these other guys, they, they call me when they're ready. You know? When, like, when a, when a fight happens, like, look how long it's been since me and George St. Pierre talked. We talked right after the fight. He said, I'm going on vacation, and then we'll talk when I get back from vacation. And we just talked today. I mean, we talked a, a few days ago. He said, I'll call you back. And today's the day we had the actual conversation. These guys go home. They hang out with their family. They, they go on vacations. They let all the, they get healed up, and then, and then we talk fights again. We're, we're not hounding guys. So when was the last time you talked to BJ? To who? To BJ. I talked to BJ last week. He was in the it wasn't one of those kind of conversations. It was about something else. I saw something and I was like, oh, I was thinking about you. And, you know, we talked about something like that. You know? I mean, I just literally, Rashad's fighting Dan Henderson. Rashad texted me the other day about something that has nothing to do with fighting. And we talked, it's the first time we've talked since his last fight. You know, it just happens when you, it's not like we talk all the time to all the guys. Not like in the old days, man, when we had five fights a year. I talked to everybody all the time. Do you have any plans for the Scandinavian countries in the future? Scandin- I, off the top of my head, I couldn't answer that question, honestly. I can make up some shit for you if you want me to, but I, I, I don't know. Please do. Yeah, do that. We come all the way from We are coming to Scandinavia. We're coming there soon, before the end of the year. Thanks. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> Done with me? That sounds weird because he just won. I feel sorry for my pal. This guy, every time he gets right there, he comes back down, you know? And uh, he's a tough, durable guy. He's, he's, he's you know, been in the sport forever. He's beat everybody. Every time he gets right there, he goes back down. You know what I mean? He's 8.7 to 8 right now, but do you think it's time for him to you know, like a step up to the ladder and level of Like who? Uh, who do you think he should fight next? I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, he just seems like he's kind of buried in like one spot. In his no, but every time he starts to get right to that point where he's about to, he loses. You know what I mean? You tell me which one you think I should make. I'll make the fight you pick right now. Uh, let's like Condit. Condit? Okay. Condit, <laughs> Condit wants to fight Diaz. He just retired. Huh? <laughs> I love asking you guys that fucking question now. This is fun. You picked the fight. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, if you take the top, uh, Rory's fighting uh, Jake. Yep. Um, George St. Pierre is going to fight Hendricks. What about Koscheck? Diaz and Condit, huh? Koscheck. Koscheck's fighting Maya. Kim. Kim? Yeah. Yeah. 
probably do that. All right. Good team effort, boys. <laughs> I like it, girls. Thank so, you. Right. Since we're booking fights, um, yeah. the, the, the fight I mentioned to Cerrone, he said uh, that uh, I like Josh, that. Josh Tom. I like that. You like that? I like that fight too. Yeah. I don't want to touch on something. <laughs> what else is out the contract? This, this is going to come out and Joe's going to go, hey, Joe So is going to like, mind your fucking business. I was, I was planning on doing this. <laughs> well, I think Josh was saying, I mean, a lot of the top ten guys are already booked, so that, that one. Right. It's true. We're, we're booked. We are, we are right now. That's why it's so hard to talk about this. It's yeah. after the fights, I just don't know. How, how hard is it going to be booking that that, that run from uh, August, September? You know, there's like a six-week run with like four or five shows, you know. Well, you're going to have to have a lot of guys. Knock on wood. Everybody's been healthy, relatively healthy this season. You know, we had the, the, the I'm calling it season this year, the, 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 the toe with him. Dude, tonight, Dos Santos was throwing those punches, and Hunt was putting his head down like this. Did you see that? And he was hitting him right on the top of his head. I was like, he's going to break his hand tonight. This, <laughs> that's going to happen. But we've been really lucky. So as long as everybody stays healthy, everybody's fired up, everybody wants to keep fighting, it's been a really successful year so far. So as long as everything stays together, we're gonna we're gonna kick ass the end of this year. We're gonna have some great fights. Did you think at all that TJ Grant would knock out Gray Maynard? Nope. Did- and you noticed when that fight started, Gray Maynard was not respecting him at all. He was walking right into him, throwing bombs at him, and then ended up getting caught. I mean, it, it, for TJ, for him to knock out, you know, the way he did, he earned it tonight. Has he been a surprise for you, TJ? Because, I mean, he was kind of been like a, a 500 yeah. fighter as well. He's been a shocker, man. Just turned it on and just been wrecking everybody. Literally wrecking everybody. I got I to ask. There's no there's no doubt that you have your favorites, guys that have grown with the company. Right. They're all kind of on their way out now. I know you're a busy guy, but is there ever a point where you kind of, shit, I'm getting old. Get, get yourself, find, get, find yourself being I'm nostalgic. Yeah, yeah, just the whole, it's a new wave of mixed martial arts. This yeah. is all these guys are on the way out, and you're directly a part of that, considering when you bought the company and how these guys grew. Right. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's been crazy. I mean, I think the weirdest one for me was, you know, Chuck retiring. I mean, the, uh, Chuck... I, I managed him before we even owned the UFC. So when that whole thing happened, it was different. But, you know, and, and there's a lot of good people coming into the sport now and, and a lot of big stars from, you know, uh, Kane Velasquez. You saw the pop for him tonight. Are you shitting me? Think about this. When just that rivalry with Brazil and Mexico, when these two fight, that's going to be a huge fight. It really is. Um uh, you know, you got stars like Kane, you got John Jones, George St. Pierre is still here. You got Ronda Rousey. I, I mean, the list goes on and on of all these people. And, and, and we had a great season in the Ultimate Fighter. Um, you know, a couple of really good guys came off that season. It's just, it's good stuff, man. The sport continues to grow. And Do you ever catch yourself being nostalgic, though? Like, being sit, what? Nostalgic. Like, I thinking never, about those guys. Never. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I do. I, I be Tonight, when we got here, I always have these suites up in the, the lofts here, yeah. right? Skyloft? Yeah. So I'm in the Skyloft and we're walking down that hallway and I literally said tonight when we were walking down the hallway, I go, dude, you know what this reminds me? When we first started breaking through and we were doing these things, I used to throw huge parties up in the Skyloft, right? These big parties. Everybody would come and when Chuck would want to fight, he'd come to the party after. And it was crazy. Now when the fight's over, I like fucking run and hide somewhere to go eat and then I go home. I'm old. Okay, that, that's that, what that and means. that's I'm what old. I was getting at. <laughs> the parties are over, and uh, but yeah, I just said that tonight. That when when Chuck would fight in Vegas, when this thing started to take off, it was awesome. It was crazy, and it was it, it was uh, so much fun because it was so new, and we were finally making it. You know, it was, we were on the way up, and now it's just like <laughs> we got so much shit to do between programming all these different countries and, and, and the Fox. I mean, the Fox deal alone is a beast. If you look, how many of you guys have fuel? You guys, a lot of you guys have fuel? Did, did you see fuel before the UFC was on fuel? Mm-hmm. And I'm not, listen, I'm going to actually yeah, show once. Like yeah, motocross, <laughs> snowboarding, <laughs> <laughs> skateboarding. I never watched the station yeah. once. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. yeah. If you yeah. saw the turnaround from how that network was to what it is now, it's not, it's unbelievable. You know, um, They've, they've had the biggest growth ever in the history of fuel. The numbers would continue every month. They keep doing better and better and better. And uh, and the television, the network is badass. If you're a UFC fan, I feel sorry for the people that don't have fuel because it is it is an awesome uh, network. 
Um, but doing things like that, like building these networks with these guys that are that are uh, super smart guys and, and really behind the UFC and, and, and want to grow the sport too. It's it's a lot of work, but it's it's very cool. Is there ever a point where you think, and you're a you're a competitive guy when you've conquered everything? Is that I mean, Fox is done. Um, I guess the, there's still the premium deal out there, but. You know, what's yeah. left at this point for you? Well, all the countries. The thing, the thing that, that, that drives me is I, I don't even think about that stuff yet because I know how much work there is to do, you know, and, and I'm so I'm so arrogant about it. I honestly believe that nobody else can do it. Yeah. You know, I honestly believe that. What's it gonna, honestly, then what's it going to take for you to not feel that way? Or do you not know? We're almost there. Yeah? Yeah, we're there. I, I, listen, the UFC can live without me. Absolutely 100%. Dude who started fucking McDonald's is gone. Do Dave you, Thomas is gone. Do you want to live without the UFC? Not now. Not right now, I don't. But there's, I, I know what I want to do. I still know what needs to be done. You know? And uh, once I do that, I'm pretty comfortable with, with saying, okay. You know? And, and I have to be aligned with the Fertitta brothers, too. Right. You know, I can't get to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. Thanks, guys. I'm leaving. You know? <laughs> It's it's it, you know we're we're partners and and uh, well you mentioned you know. the casino business huh you mentioned the casino business yeah. as a part uh, possible transition yeah. how many years is that huh how many years is that still seven or eight years switching topics you know what's the day for me I don't no. Roy Nelson gave me this t-shirt today. What do you think of it? Oh, Roy Nelson boy. gave it to you? Hold it up for us, dude. Yeah, hold this one up. <laughs> this actually cost him money to print. Wow. <laughs> 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 said that on Thursday. Yeah. Those of you that can't see it, this is actually a fact. <laughs> he is the smartest guy on earth. This is true. The fact, the fact that he went out and made that, that actually kind of proves he has some kind of business. That he's smart? Is that what it means? So yeah. yeah, that proves he's smart. He's a fucking genius. That's actually a genius. Huh? You want to keep it? Sure, I'll keep it. Yeah, you want it? Well, I, I thought it was fun, but I think you should have Go it. ahead, hang it up on your on your set for your show. <laughs> with all your little action figures and stuff. <laughs> you watch. I saw a caption of it once. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, yeah, speaking of Roy, uh, you never talked about Shane Carwin. Um, Retiring? Yeah. yeah. What do you think his legacy is? I, I called him. Uh, he left me a really nice message. I called him, left him a really nice message. Um, I feel sorry for, for him, you know. He, he wanted that fight with Roy so bad. He, you know, he, he, he honestly wanted to give this thing a run and really do this for a living. He's a guy who always kept his second job because he has a kick-ass second job. But, you know... He told me he got a lot of great things out of this sport. It's been unbelievable, you know, competing here. And, you know, just couldn't be a classier, nicer guy. Cool. And what about uh, what about any stadium events? Uh, what? An stadium event, a football stadium event. Is that a football stadium? stadium. Football stadium? <clears throat> I don't know. No. I want to do one. We'll yeah. see. Maybe in Brasilia. Yes. Yeah. Brazil is is a, is a no-brainer for a stadium show. I mean, everywhere we go there, things sells out, and it's just, you know, it's crazy. And they're loving some Vitor down there right now, too. I was going to ask you, uh, Robert Whitaker, the night went tonight, also called the Smith City and Tough Smash. Yep. Tough States. Are you going to do another Smash? Should I ask you that one? Did what? If you're going to do another Tough Smash, or, you know, do that whole, where you have, you know, Australia versus England, are you going to kind of do more of those pairings and stuff? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we're working on one of those right now. Yeah. Um, other than fighting, the fighters getting hurt. Is there any like, and the UFC is doing so well, like you said, everything seems to be working your way. Is there something that you fear the most? Something that can happen that all of a sudden you take you guys down like something crazy, like a fighter dying or right. Like what, what do you fear? Like what right. do you think? Oh my God, just not that. If there is anything. Yeah, I know. I don't. I don't. I don't really think. Obviously, I. I, I you know. I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody, but when we, when you do things the way that we do, this is the safest sport in the world. When I say that, I mean when you go through all the proper medical testing before the fight, you know you have a 100% healthy athlete. You have doctors on site. You have you know the referees and everything, and then you have the proper medical attention after. You know it's you really really limit 
bad injuries happening. You know, we've been doing this thing since 13 years now. Um, UFC has been around for 20 years now, and, and no deaths or serious injuries. And we really um, obviously take a lot of pride in that, number one. But number two, it's, you know, we're on top of that. We, we are all all Any over the medical. Like something that would derail the UFC life and just come from the world? I mean, nothing that I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, it would have to be something that would come. But then again... I never thought we'd have a year like last year where every main event's getting hurt. I, I didn't think that was even possible. Anything is possible. I hope that that isn't, but who knows? We're pretty good. We're on our shit, man. We have a we have a I lot of. Are you going to be in ten years? You said global. I think it hasn't been ten years. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good night, you guys. Good night, David. Thank you.